Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday morning. I guess it's one of the strangest days that we get to have every few years, especially now when it's the day after election day and so many things are yet undecided. Uh, the expectations are uh, not being left up, lived up to. Uh, disappointment abounds. And God reigns on. The thing is, one thing many of us share, regardless of <laughs> who we were back in the election, is disappointment. We just uh, put a lot, a lot, into our expectations, into our understanding of the way things ought to work out. And friends, there's nothing really new about this. Uh, God's people were were well, well taken care of by God, and instead they wanted a king. And He said, "You don't need a king," but they insisted on getting a king. And uh, we've somehow insisted on finding our own way in the midst of God's kingdom ever since. So stand fast, hold fast. Let me assure you, God is still in charge. The King of Kings reigns on. Hear these words today from Philippians. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who's at work in you, enabling you both to do will, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I'm poured out as a libation over the sacrifice, the offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you in the same way you also must be glad and rejoice with me. So Paul gives us some words of wisdom on how to refocus, to rethink, maybe to repurpose. I don't think it's a time to give up on anything. But I think what, what, the, the, uh, what I watched last night demonstrates what we all already knew. For whatever reason right now in the United States of America, we have great division. Many of us support some different sections of what's going on, and yet it seems like every one of those takes it too far, almost to the point that just can't support them anymore. I don't know how to fix it. I have friends, associates, church members, fellowship members, people that hang out with the Hope community that are on all sides of all of these arguments. It seems like we have some amazing uh, delusion. That we can be a part of something where we are, I don't know, all the same. I've been a United Methodist, well, as a Methodist, then a United Methodist since 
Um, I guess I was uh, six months old or whenever I got baptized, if not before that. And uh, one of the things I've always cherished and, and, and been so proud of about being a Methodist is that we have this wide open doorway into the kingdom. That we don't narrow down the doorway and say only specific things, only specific ways. We offer the opportunity to meet and engage with Jesus Christ, our Lord, to everyone. Now, sometimes uh, people have irrational or, 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 or unknowing beliefs. But our task is not to force some particular doctrinal way of thinking down their throat. Uh, our task is to love them, <coughs> uh, to engage them with a pathway to get to know Jesus Christ. Because after all, the saving is up to Jesus, not us. I've always cherished the group where we had people that were pretty conservative. I had a tendency to want to hang on to the King James Version of the Bible. And we had others that were more open, wanted to read, as soon as it came out, the Good News Bible, which was in common English, or the Living Bible, or the Message. And all of those have value. The reading and inspiration of God's Word never returns empty. If people ask me, I have a, maybe two or three preferred versions of the Bible that I like, and some of them are for uh, tactical reasons, if you will. Much of the uh, information that we have published from the United Methodist Church, the Book of Worship, and so forth, is in the New Revised Standard Version, and so uh, it is a good version, and it uh, also matches up with many of the things that are already printed and out there. But the NIV is good and the Living Translation. In fact, if you really want to dig into understanding God's Word, it's great to read several versions because they offer a more complete, if you will, 360-degree view of the message. I think the thing that makes me sad, I suspect it was crushing Paul's heart is when we start to pick and choose who's worth saving. It seems like to me right now, for the people of the way, those of us that follow Jesus, it is a time of Reconciliation with Christ. A time to realize that we are broken people. To pray for God to inspire us to be people worth noticing, people worth following, people leading others into the kingdom. So my prayer right now is to be thankful for all who gave so much time and so much of their life to attempt to help our country. My sadness is for the 
gazillions of dollars that were spent that could have helped someone rebuild a house or overcome a dreaded disease with medical bills. Friends, I pray for our country to remain at peace, for people to uh, somehow unite about something. And I pray for forgiveness for the ways in which in many ways I and others have failed to be followers of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, what an awesome day it is that you've given us. Beautiful weather in a beautiful and wonderful country. Father, we praise you. We give thanks for you. We ask you to forgive us, guide us, and direct us into your future for us, for our communities, for our country, and for the world. Amen. I hope you have a great, great Super Wednesday. Bye-bye.